Welcome to Radical Cram School. We're gonna learn about social justice, revolution, and how to be powerful in the bodies that you have. Hi. 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 Who was Grace Lee Boggs, do you remember? Yes. Tell me about what you remember about her. Um, I remember that Grace Lee Boggs was a writer, philosophist, activist, and feminist. She was born in Rhode Island, 1915, and her parents were Chinese immigrants. Her Chinese name is Yu Ping. Yu Ping means Jade Peace. When Grace was a kid, she loved to read and write and study. She loved studying so much, she went to Barnard College when she was 16 years old on a scholarship. That's what my mom wants me to do. Grace was like, school is so cool. I want to go to more college. So she went to Bryn Mawr College to get a PhD in philosophy. After Grace got a PhD, she couldn't find a good job because back then, people said, are you crazy? We won't hire a Chinese American woman to teach us philosophy. She had all the skills they needed, but because of her gender and race, they wouldn't hire her. So Grace took a job that it made only $10 a week in a library because it came with an apartment with free rent. But it was a ghost apartment. In a basement, it had rats. Grace would scream, I can hear them running around my apartment and even running past my ears. Ew! One day Grace said, enough. I need to organize with my neighbors for better living conditions. That's when she really got to meet her neighbors who were people from the black community. And she dedicated her life to black liberation. She joined the Workers' World Party. One day, Grace's friends said, hey, you should move to Detroit. There's a lot of activism there. Grace moved to Detroit in the 1950s. The year that Grace moved to Detroit, she met Jimmy Boggs. Jimmy was a writer and an activist just like Grace. During that time, interracial marriage was illegal. People would say, you two better not get married. It's against the law. That they said, who cares? We love each other so much. We're getting married anyway. Grace and Jimmy didn't have any children, but they wrote books oh. together. <laughs> Grace and Jimmy's writings were so influential that people would say, wow. I'm going to fight for civil rights. Grace and Jimmy also got along because they loved reading Karl Marx too. Karl Marx said, there's <gasps> two classes of people. We're, We're the workers. workers. We build buildings. We sell clothes. We grow your food. We are the capitalists. We control the factories. We make money off of workers. We try to pay the little as possible. I'm so rich. <laughs> Detroit is where people used to build cars. A lot of auto workers were losing their jobs to robots and machines. <laughs> so auto workers had no more jobs anymore. And black auto workers were having it worse because of racism. Where they used to make factories, they're all brown fields. Brown fields are places that the auto company has abandoned. When people are not happy where they live, lots of crime happens. Grace and Jimmy often had their house broken into. <laughs> the mayor of Detroit said, let's build some casinos over these brown fields so people can spend money on gambling and drinking. Grace and Jimmy thought, that's a really dumb way how to build a community. Grace looked at the brown field and said, what if we build a beautiful garden here instead? Ooh. We could put a beautiful mural on the wall. Yeah. When she was in her mid-90s, Grace created Detroit Summer, which is urban gardening. Urban gardening is a way that people can plant things that they can eat. And it also makes cities more beautiful. Ooh. Grace lived till she was 100 years old in Detroit. Even at the end of her life, when she used a wheelchair to get around, she was still organizing and planning and doing lots of good things for their community. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday!